I'm in the park. Am I in it or at it? I'm at the park. The sun doth rise over the distant hillsides. Can you see it? Can you see it rising? How do I zoom in? Oh, well, it's over there somewhere. There it is. There is the fiery ball. There is the sunrise. Oh, the glory of the English countryside. There is a moon over there somewhere. So I'm not really in the countryside. There are... Uh, civilization. Also, I'm scrolling the wrong way. Also, there is... Um, there is the weirdest fucking smell of sarsaparilla. You know, like, like root beer? It smells like root beer. There are strange drifting threads of cobweb and weird floaty bits. It's all quite magical. It is all like a pixie land because it's five o'clock in the morning and nobody else is up and I like that very much. I have this all, all this new sparkly world and it's all mine. Anyway, um, yes, I wanted to make a video. I've been thinking about making it for at least three weeks actually, but I wanted to do it in majestic scenery, which this isn't exactly fucking majestic, but you know, it's not bad, it's, it's a jolly setting. That's what I was looking for, I was looking for a jolly setting. Because yes, I want to make a video about the importance of being miserable sometimes, and why I am not miserable anymore. Um, <laughs> because I've noticed, quite a lot of people have noticed that I am not miserable anymore. It actually extends to, uh, to other things too, that you know, people comment on the obvious, that oh, oh, it's nice to see that you're happy, oh. Oh, things seem to be better, you know, and I'm thinking, well, just how insane was I before? I'm not sure, but I also don't want to go back and find out. The thing that people also comment on, mostly on uh, Instagram, is my makeup. That, um, you, you, you know, you get comments that don't make you think much, like, oh, this is nice, oh, I really like this, stuff like that. But <laughs> you also get comments that are like, wow, you've really improved, or like, this looks so much better, or, or something that indicates that it looked a bit shit before. And, uh, <laughs> thing is my makeup hasn't improved. Actually, it was just as good about two years plus ago, two, three, maybe even four years ago. It, it was, it was much of a muchness. Um, <laughs> it just sucked for a year and a half in increasing suckiness for a reason and uh, <laughs> that reason is that I was drunk for a year and a half and uh, <laughs> yeah that will make your makeup a bit shit it really will oh god it's bad I only went out properly once in the last year um to Jazz's memorial oh the pictures I have from that night I mean fuck I remember being drunk and I was always drunk, but I really remember being drunk. Oh, but the worst thing is my makeup. I mean, God, it's, it's one thing being drunk and embarrassing, right? But being drunk and embarrassing while you look horrendous is just, just an extra layer cake of awfulness, you know? So anyway, so, so yes, would, would I have said I was an alcoholic? Yes, yes, undoubtedly, yes. I mean, I, I could go into the whole thing, but that would, that would be boring. And there's no point, really, uh, because I am not one of those people. Fuck, shut up, what's it even telling me? Uh, the next question with, with all of this is, um, you know, so, so what, what did you do? What did you do? How, how did you stop? How did you stop being a terrible drunken embarrassment? And, uh, you know, are you now completely abstinent? And do you go to meetings and all of this? And the answer is a bollocks to all of that. Um, no, I'm not abstinent. I don't drink anymore apart from socially and then I'll have a couple maybe don't necessarily have to uh, I, I will drink on my own and if I do I will have a bit and uh, then I will put it down and then it will roll around on my desk for the next couple of weeks or so uh, it doesn't interest me anymore um, it, it was shit it, of all the things I've been addicted to you know, all of those, I've come out with at least a little bit, usually a lot of like, you know what, that was fucking great. There were some great times and uh, there, there was, some, there was some, some iffy moments, but it, overall I have lovely memories of everything I've ever been addicted to. Apart from alcohol, it was shit and I have no interest in it. Um, but I don't believe in becoming an Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous indoctrinated robot. I mean, if it works for you, I do not diss it. If it works for you and it's making you happy, that's the only thing that matters. 
everyone is different is the fundamental thing. And uh, I, I do actually want to have a whole video about rehab and all of this because no I didn't go to rehab yes I nearly did but no I didn't and uh, I want to talk about that and um but that's a whole lengthy subject all of its own and that's not the point of this video um although yes I, I everyone is different there are whole different things you do not have to believe that oh no I have been an addict therefore I I have to go to rehab, has to be done by someone else, can't do it myself. The fucking doctrine says that. It says I have to admit that I'm powerless and give everything over to God. Only God can save me and also a very expensive rehab. Yes, anyway, I have a lot of problems with the whole 12-step thing. You can stop being addicted to something and actually behave like a normal person with it. Yes, you can still go out and have a drink. You can have one drink and put it down and you're not going to end up the next morning in a ditch smoking a crack pipe with your ass because you're an addict and you'll always be an addict and you have to take one day at a time. And the reason they say take one day at a time is because if you are a, a drug appreciative person, the idea that you are never allowed a single moment of altered consciousness for the rest of your life, even on Christmas when everyone else is drunk, you still have to be sober as fuck forever. That's why you have to take it a day at a time because fuck me, that's a depressing, awfully, horribly mind-blowing, depressing outlook. It really is. I couldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no, no. And that was the main reason I didn't go to rehab, actually, was because I knew you do this, you come out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone is watching you forever, and the minute you pick up a fucking wine glass, even if you're just tidying it away, they will descend on you like maddened, rabid vultures and, <laughs> and remind you how expensive your rehab was. And, uh, and it's like, no, I, did, I didn't want to do that. That was, that was a horrible commitment. And you don't have to fucking commit to that. You just, you just stop doing it for a little bit, which involves some tapering with alcohol because you will die if you just stop drinking, because I drank a lot. A uh, bottle of Jack a day, often, uh, sometimes even one of the really big litre bottles of Jack on a really excessive day. Uh, so I would have died probably if I had have just stopped drinking. So there was a bit of tapering, that was piss easy, it wasn't difficult. Um, and then, you know, you pretty quickly learn, you know what? This actually feels a fuck of a lot better because, Jesus, everyone's been hungover, haven't they? Imagine that, times ten for a straight year and a half. Uh, and and uh, in between times, you're, you, you're going to be drunk, but you're not going to know you're drunk because you're always drunk. So you don't actually feel it anymore. It's not good. It just, it just makes you psychotic. So you're either very ill or very psychotic for a year and a half. The minute you actually establish some kind of normal mode again, you're like, this is fucking brilliant. I have no desire to go back to that. Uh, and therefore, you know, on an evening out, you could, oh, I'll have a couple and uh, maybe it's nice for a bit. Maybe you go, you know, well, I've still got a huge tolerance. This doesn't do anything for me. I'm not bothered. Uh, it's possible. So anyway, yes, I, I mostly, I mostly vape weed now um, instead. Not, not really instead, actually. It, it was quite a long time where I didn't really do much of anything. Uh, but, but weed is, is much nicer. Much nicer. Doesn't really do anything bad to you. And makes you very happy. Very happy. Yes, I mean, I was very happy anyway, actually. Not while I was drunk. I was miserable. But I was very happy as soon as I stopped being drunk. And <laughs> oh, God, 2017, man. Oh, it's all very regrettable. Oh, yeah, P.S. That's why I'm fat, too, you know. Um, <laughs> I did gain some of it because of beta blockers, but I'm pretty sure I gained most of it because alcohol has a lot of calories. And uh, so that's that, you know, that, that will be why the fatness will be receding over the next little while, because I am no longer taking in about 1,500 calories worth of alcohol every day while sitting on my ass. <laughs> so, yes, yes, you know, so I was happy. I was happy afterwards. I was like, ah, this is amazing. But, uh, yeah, my point was, 2017, yes, 2017. Oh, I regret everything about 2017 from its uh, beginning to its slightly less uh, ending. I... Oh, nothing in 2017 ever would have happened had I not been drunk, frankly. Um, you know, so the, uh, the only thing I'm kind of peeved about, well, I'm peeved about being a bit fat, uh, but I'm mostly just peeved because, you know, I'm older. 
and I didn't really notice, you know, time goes very slowly, but you forget everything. So it, it's kind of like a black hole, just just the year that's a black hole. And then you come out of it and you look in the mirror and you're like, dude, my eye bag is like rotten. How did that happen? It's like, dude, you're like a year and a half fucking older than you were the last time you looked in a mirror sober. Uh, so that's a bit annoying, but it, it makes you feel a bit immortal too, you know, that you can just toss a year into the garbage can for no reason. So you know what? I'm, I'm going to spend a year and a half being drunk. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then I'll, I'll pop out of it. I'll, I'll resume life because I'm fucking immortal and I have I have eternity to live. So that's the way I'm looking at it. It's quite nice. Uh, but anyway, yes, happy. Came out of it. And, and because I had been so demented and so miserable and so ill, fucking everything, everything, everything is my dominion. I am a dog in a river. Everything, everything happens, you know. I get purple nail polish in, in the in the mail. I'm a dog in a river. I I eat a pumpkin burger. A dog in a river. Uh, the sun shineth, it shineth upon the mist. Upon the mist, upon the mist. And I feel like I'm in the Hobbit. I am a dog in a river. And, uh, and that is the importance of being miserable. Yes, if you are profoundly, exquisitely miserable at the moment, at some point you may stop being miserable, and even if you only attain a kind of barrel-scraping kind of mm, life is not awful, even if you only get to that level, you know what, you, you will be a dog in a puddle, at least, um, because, you, because you've been miserable. So that's, that is the importance of, of misery, and uh, I'm sure I had something else to say. Oh yes, yes, and, and then obviously, you know, weed is, is the icing on the cake. It's not, it's not a terrible thing to, to smoke a bit of weed. It's not terrible, particularly if you vape it. It's not terrible. And everything is just lovely. And, and, and I, can, I can do things. I can do things on weed too. Like I can write and stuff. Because actually, when I first started drinking, it was because of writing that I, I found writing drunk like, it was brilliant. It was really good. And actually, I still find that it is... It, all, all things are helpful with writing. You know, there are so many different spectrums in the rainbow that you can... Or is a rainbow within a spectrum? Um, <laughs> that you can you can write in it. It makes things different. But writing drunk, you know, so long as you've basically got the fucking idea in your head, especially if you put music on too, I, I do I do think alcohol is an interesting drug. Actually, I think it's worthy of a trip report almost that different levels, different things, kind of interesting, um, you know, until you get completely bored with it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, initially, when you don't have a tolerance and you actually still can get drunk, you, you get drunk, you, the words just come out. They're very flowery and purple and poetic, which could be awful, but it kind of was, was good <laughs> initially. Although um, my writing did become a novel, which ended up three and a half times its intended size, <laughs> with so much repetition, so much rambling. It's, it's... But within that, there is a lot of useful stuff that came out, you know, about the characters' histories and ideas and points of view that came out purely because it, it, it was not thought about, you know, it was, it was not a really conscious, you know, it was just a stream of consciousness, like, drunk and bleh, and uh, untapped, untapped reservoirs of consciousness. Um, <laughs> but, um, yes, yes, I, eventually it got to the point where anything I fucking had to do, whether it was, like, writing, whether it was replying to YouTube comments, or anything, It'd be like, oh God, I can't psych myself up to that. Now, you don't realise that it's because you're horribly hungover that you can't psych yourself up to anything, but you're just like, oh, I can't, can't be fucking, oh, fuck. I'm like, oh, I have a drink. I have a couple of drinks, and then I'll get on with it, which has always, always really been my method of everything. It's like, you take a drug, and then you do the thing. And, uh, but eventually, you, you just hung over, and, and nothing, nothing makes you function. Whereas weed, you know, yes, you, you get a bit sleepy if you if you've got a kind of hash over them. You, you can be a bit sleepy, but in general, get up, everything's fine. There's a man walking across the park. Hey, it's a doggy. Doesn't want to talk to me. What the fuck was I saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, weed. Um, you know, I can do things. I can write. I can make music. I have I have ideas. Uh, not not very focused ideas, admittedly. I need to rein myself in more and do the things I intend to do. Oh, the dog is so nice, rather than getting distracted like that. But uh, oh, he's a very fast doggy. He's he's so fast. He's chasing pigeons. Oh, lovely. 
So yes, you know, and uh, I, I think I sleep less. No, actually I sleep better. I sleep better, but I sleep less. Cause God, that's the other thing. That I think was the one of the things that started merging, <laughs> like drinking from being like an evening thing to a like fucking all the time thing was um, sleeping actually. The, I, I, you know, I'd wake up and I wouldn't be able to sleep and I'd get up, do like two shots of like gin or something and then go back to bed. And, Oh, I don't think I'm ever going to drink gin again in my entire life. I mean, I could, but, ugh. Um, you know, and then I'd go back to bed and it kind of worked a bit, but actually I ended up having to do it about like, six times a night, you know, and, and then sometimes you just, when well, you wake up at six and you can't sleep, so you know, well, fuck it, I'm just going to start drinking now then. <laughs> Eventually I'll fall asleep, but you don't, you're just up all day and then you're very obnoxious and insane by the end of it. Um... Oh god, the other embarrassing thing actually is, yeah, the, the fact that you don't know you're drunk. So you go about your daily business feeling not drunk, but apparently you're kind of quite obviously intoxicated at nine o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and, then, and then you go to the shops that you used to go to and, uh, and people say things like, oh, and how are you doing now? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's really quite funny. You're like, you can't say anything, can you? You say, well, because then it gets really, bo you know, you, you can't be humorous about these things. No one lets you. You can't, you can't just say, yeah, yeah, I was fucking drunk for a year and a half. I'm sorry if I was a bit, a bit weird. I finished with that now. I'm going to be stoned instead, so I'm going to be a bit weird, but I won't stumble into anything. <laughs> can't say that because people get really serious you know and they fucking ask you about, about how many days you've been absent for and you're supposed to know to the to the number you know people do even when it's been years you ask someone oh you know how long have you how long have you got sober and uh and they, they say oh it's been it's been five years eight weeks 37 hours and 12 13 14 seconds it, and, you know you're like jesus how depressing is that you know that it's been that long and you're still every day you get up and you the, you have to cling to this thing oh, 1237th day you know don't ruin it one day at a time one day at a time don't plan ahead don't freak out at the enormity of torment ahead of you this is this is what you're expected to be like you know it's like mate i haven't got a fucking clue how long i've been sober i'm sorry uh, i know it's sometime in the middle of march I know that much, um, so that that kind of feels when 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 life started. I, you know, if I look at if I look at my pictures or anything on my phone um, for like makeup ideas and stuff, I don't I don't go back further than there because it's like no no that's that's all the shit makeup and the embarrassing pictures and the bad memories. So um, so we'll just pretend all of that never happened. And uh, uh, yeah, so so that's that's my explanation for being cheerful. And having makeup that isn't completely smeared all over my face like a cack handed toddler. <laughs> so, yeah, so now you know, now you know why I'm fat, why my makeup was terrible, why, why I made a lot of, of, of dubious choices in all departments, uh, <laughs> etc. And why, why everything is more cheerful. So, so yes, um, you, can, you can probably, you can probably stop. Um, worrying that I'm going to turn into a psychotic lunatic again at the drop of a hat because I don't think it's very likely. I don't think there's much that could induce me to to do that. And you know, I'm not saying that I don't have bad thoughts about bad things. Never alcohol. Like literally, no fucking desire for that shit. Like not at all. Not the taste. Not the effects. Which, which is actually how I used to be for all of my life. I always considered it a shit drug. Um, you know, never interested me. Never interested me at all. Um, you know, even when I went out and did, did loads of like rave drugs and stuff, I never touched a drink with any of them because I, I considered alcohol a shit dirty drug and I didn't want to dirty the experience of actually good drugs. Plus the fact that alcohol has calories, so fuck that. If you're going to take a drug, why would you take one that's going to make you fat? But you know, eventually I guess you run the gamut of everything else and uh, inevitably you're probably at some point going to, going to sort of think, oh well this is here, I'll have one of these, oh this is different, alright, this isn't so shit as I thought, uh, you know, and, and 
spend a year and a half being drunk. <laughs> but nonetheless, I, I don't. I don't ever think. I, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it back. Actually, if it was a choice of that, or from the very moment I realised I had a drug problem, I became a wholly sob sobriety. I became a whole sobriety person, and never did another drug again, including weed, including alcohol also should include coffee and tobacco but note it never does you go to a fucking meeting or a drug center they drink coffee by the gallon they smoke like chimneys no one cares about those drugs for some reason but you know ooh, weed ooh, bit of booze no but um you know so, so yes possibly i could have avoided becoming a terrible alcoholic had i gone by that stance but actually bullshit no i probably would have killed myself i i either would have become a real raging, massive heroin addict because because it's like, oh, I've got to do this now because tomorrow I've got to start counting days again. It's, it would, it's not conducive to, it's black and white thinking, it's extremism and it's not helpful to some people. Some mentalities like mine, it's not helpful. So I would rather have spent a year and a half being drunk and embarrassing and fat and now have a happy outlook and do drugs at a, a normal pace than I would be that kind of person it makes my eye twitch you know <laughs> sorry this is going to offend people i know it is but fuck you know it's, it's it's just it's just how i feel it's how i feel how i came to go from being a terrible alcoholic to being a dog in a river and everybody's viewpoint is is valid and actually alcoholics anonymous has no higher success statistic than people trying on their own therefore my outlook is probably about as rational and and science backed as theirs anyway this is long so i suppose i'm going to shut up was there anything else i wanted to say don't think so but yes feel free to feel free to tell me things about anything that seems vaguely relevant to you what the fuck is that i swear that it looked like a squirrel but a bird came out the other side it's magical at the park at half five in the morning well, wow. so so yes, I you know if, if if you are a terrible alcoholic, I recommend that you um, unless you you have a family history of schizophrenia or schizophrenia itself, or these other things that people worry about with weeds. I don't know whether it's right or not, but you know they do. Uh, if if weed has ever been kind to you in the past, and you were a terrible alcoholic. Uh, yeah, just, just bank that cash that was going on today's bottle of whatever noxious poison. Uh, uh, just, just pop down, pop down to your local weed dealer instead. Get, get something, and go, go to the park in the morning and see a sunrise, and uh, and blaze up. And um, and I think, I think you will possibly find that actually things are better, it's better, and can be better than you imagine. Um, not that I am one of these people who believes weed to be the fucking mystical cure for fucking everything nor do i stand by the statement that like do do but it's it's good for you man because it's natural it comes out of the ground nothing can be harmful when it's natural it comes out of the ground it's like you're fucking burning it and inhaling smoke people go to hospital with smoke inhalation it's not good also lots of very toxic poisonous things grow out of the fucking ground think about all those berries that you know your mother when you're small, so don't eat that or you'll die in a horrible way or you know, shit your internal organs out and die. Um, well, that's natural too. So if you believe this, go and fucking eat the berries, you know, see, see what happens. Um, you know, opium, opium for fuck's sake, is just straight out of a fucking poppy pod. You know, it's very natural, but it's also physically addictive. And, uh, you know, the roots of pretty much all modern <laughs> opioid medications and uh, uh is causing a huge huge problem so it, it's nothing it's fuck all to do with the fact that it's natural it's just that it's a nice thing you know i think i think that um ecstasy has, has a lot of very positive uses in a person's life depending on their psyche and the way they go about it and all the rest of it but i also accredit that with with being a very good thing for my life not right now i don't do it anymore jesus it'd kill me i can't even drink coffee that's not decaf so i'm not going to take ecstasy anymore sadly um but it did it did me a lot of good in the past and obviously ecstasy is not a remotely natural drug it's everything everything is is different and subjective and uh, you know you, you need to you need to see 
do some research and do some personal research and, and see what makes you a happy dog in a river. This is really fucking long, so I guess I'm going to go away now. Go on the swings. <laughs>